The moment's finally here. It's travel day. Well, good morning and welcome back to my channel on our travel day to Rio de Janeiro. So in case you haven't watched the first episode of this series, which was pre-travel day, um, we are currently sitting uh, in Sofitel at Terminal 5 at London Heathrow. And we have our flight in about four, four and a half hours time to Rio de Janeiro. Um, Sofitel was actually really comfortable. Um, it was a little bit more expensive um, than what you would normally pay for an airport hotel. Um, but actually it's really, really nice. The, it kind of feels like a bit like a kind of four or five star hotel. All the fixtures and fittings are really, really nice. I slept quite well, the bed was comfortable, the room's really nice. Um, I did find a little bit of blood on the bathrobe they left me, which I wasn't very impressed with. Um, so, But apart from that, and I just took it off and didn't wear it again. Um, apart from that, uh, everything here has been really lovely. I really, really enjoyed it. I think we paid £227 for this room. We got £27 pound cash back on top cash back um, which is a site where you can make some money savings I will link that for you down below because it's a really really great site I've saved so much money using that over the years um, so I'll put a link for you on there just a little bit of disclosure I will get some money back I think it's about 15 quid if you do use my link so um, use my link basically I'm not affiliated to them or anything like that um, but yeah if you want to use my link I get a little bit of money David how did you sleep last night terrible why? I, th I think I was just, I was just so uh, like excited, but I'm just so tired now today. Is it because the room wasn't comfortable, or is it because you? No, no, the room was fine. The room was really fine. It was literally just like everything going on in my head, and I was awake at like three at three a.m. Are you gonna be a little misery today because you're tired? No, no. Oh, good. Well, that's good news, isn't it? I'm never a misery when I'm tired. So I'm ready, David's ready. Let's go to the terminal. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to get into the terminal as well from Sofitel. Anyway, let's go and drop off our bags and then see if we can find a nice lounge to go and sit and have some breakfast and maybe a glass of bubbly as well. What'd you say, David? Oh, there'll be several glasses of bubbly. Oh, several glasses of bubbly. So from reception, you just literally walk past reception and then there are escalators and lifts that take you up to terminal number five. Oh, there he is. We're pushing, that lady was so funny. We're pushing the ground floor, but nothing's happening. You were on the ground we're floor. We were on the ground and then it said right above T5. We were like, mm. <laughs> And then as you come out of the lift, you just literally walk straight across, uh, which takes us back to that tunnel that we walked through last night. Come back across this bridge, which goes across the road, actually. You can see the buses down there. It's a British Airways plane over there. What do the red lights flash on it mean, David? That it's moving. Oh, it's moving. He's a bit more of an aeroplane geek than I am. It's called the what? The beacon light. The beacon light. In terms of convenience, would you stay at Sofitel here again? Yeah, but it's just through here, isn't it? Yeah. It's and straight into the It's tunnel. literally like a less than a five minute walk, isn't it? Yeah. So Sofitel is on level one. I'm gonna make our way up to level five to departures. your heaviest bag on the belt. How much is it? 23.8, look at that. That's good. Twenty-six point two. <laughs> Let 
what you do with this? Just, no, don't peel it, it just sticks. This is good, we've never done this before, have we? I don't like it, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> We're now in the airport lounge at Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Um, so there is a strike, um, industrial action taking place here today with some of the security staff who do the bag scanning and also kind of the person searches as well as you come through security. So we were expecting quite a big delay here today. Because we were in Club World, we had the um, fast track security as well. There was a short line, I think it probably took us about 20 minutes to get through security, but that's pretty standard on a normal day. So really, really impressed. Of course, David got stopped and swabbed. God knows what he's got in his bag, but everything was taken out and swabbed and little, little sample put through a machine. Um, but we got there in the end, and even with all that, it still only took us about 20 minutes. Now, we've had a little bit of breakfast. Um, I had a croissant, and then I've had some scrambled eggs, a sausage, some hash browns and some beans all very very nice the lounge here is lovely it's really really busy in here though so i'm not gonna do too much filming in here it's bigger than the one at gatwick i would say um there's a lot more offering in terms of the breakfast food um there's fresh fruit there's porridges there's toast there's crumpets there's hot food um, there's cheeses and cold meats um, teas coffees juices smoothies um, there's probably at least I would say about eight bars in here as well where you can help yourself to drinks. Uh, I've had an orange juice so far and my first glass of champagne. And yeah, we've got a couple of hours just to chill out here now. We've got a nice little view here of the planes taking off as well, which is quite nice to watch, keep us entertained. Flight currently is showing on time. We don't have a gate number though. So yeah, all good. How was your breakfast? Okay. Yeah, so nice. just like, uh, you know, the... Very. Getting a catchphrase in there, it was good. What did you have? Sausage, beans, yes. hash brown, scrambled egg. That was it, no, and mushrooms. Yeah, but I want to go back for the tater tots. For the tater tots? Yeah, but I think it's going to be too much food. You've got to have them with the beans, with the sausage. Oh, have you? You can't just have. You can't have them on their own, no? No. And how many of these have you had so far? This is only my second. I'm doing better than a gap mate. Yeah, you are. So what have you forgotten? No, I haven't forgotten. They're in the wash at home. Because oh. I've been wearing them for work, I think. Oh, so you've forgotten your socks? No, I haven't forgotten socks. <laughs> there are some socks in the suitcase. Oh, but you need but more. I haven't got a substantial amount. Oh, right. <laughs> Can I uh... have you resolved the sock crisis? Yeah, but they didn't have the ones I wanted. I had to get trainer socks rather than little secret. But I mean, they'll they'll do. You didn't want? You didn't want a little secret? You've got room in your bag? No. You've got loads of room in there for I've, socks. I've got no room for you. socks. <laughs> Look how much space you've got. Well, not now. You're making me misshape my, my lovely bag. Not now. You ready? Yes, sausage. Let's go. A10. So gate A10 where we're going is actually down a level, so we've got to go down some escalators, away from the main terminal up there above us. Uh, so we've got to go downstairs and then uh, our gate is down here. Apparently it's already open but I don't think it's boarded in, so let's go down and see how we get on, shall we? You ready? Are we at the right gate this time? It's cute, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Okay, so we are now up in the air. Uh, the Heathrow experience was really, really good today. It was so busy there. When we came out of the DA lounge and walked through the terminal to get David some socks to get to the gate, I couldn't believe just how many people there were in the terminal. It was so, so busy. I'm not sure if that's to do with the industrial action or if it's always like that, because we don't always, the last few trips we've done, we've not flown from Heathrow. So that could be just how busy it generally is, but it seems so busy. 
so many luxury high-end shops as well in Terminal 5 when you're airside. It was like being in like a high-end shopping mall rather than an airport. It was really, really nice. Anyway, uh, we went down to the gate and bizarrely we had to get on a bus um, that took us to the aircraft. We're on the bus for quite a long time, it kind of winds around and then something we have done for a long time is we had to climb the stairs to the plane, which I really actually enjoyed because normally you just go through like a kind of tunnel. I'm not sure what those tunnels are called. What are they called, David? Those tunnel things? I don't know. Um, those tunnels that kind of come and suck her onto the side of the plane and connect and then you walk through. Um, but yeah, so actually climbing the stairs was was a bit old fashioned, um, but actually really enjoyable. It's something I haven't done for a long time. So I say the small things of you small minds and I think that that might be the case now. Anyway, we were welcomed off board uh, with a glass of champagne, which was lovely. The um, business class uh, world, club world area of the plane is actually really quiet. There's not many people here today, which is really good. We've been given a menu, uh, which we have here. Uh, and we've ordered our food. So on this Friday, we're gonna get a lunch and a dinner. Um, I've ordered the sweet potato soup and the roasted British chicken supreme. David's got the lock fine smoked salmon and the, of course, the braised Welsh leg of lamb. No surprise there, he's a huge lamb lover. Uh, and then later on, because it's such a long flight, 11 hours and 40 minutes from London Heathrow to Rio, they got a light meal as well uh, for me later on so yeah we're really comfortable aboard the flight we've taken off it's looking nice outside at the moment no delays so yeah it's all good uh, of course i'll come back to you when we get our food and show you that but but now basically we've just got to chill out relax i've got some editing to do i'm going to read my book for a little while then do some editing uh, maybe have a little sleep and I'm going to check out what's on the entertainment as well hopefully there's some good films and tv shows to check out as well over here We've got almost 12 hours, so uh, I won't be looking like this in 12 hours. So we've been cruising for a couple of hours now. We've got about nine hours left on the flight to Rio. Um, we're on a 787 Dreamliner by Boeing. That's one of their newest releases of planes. It's a lot quieter, a lot more efficient fuel-wise for them. Also, I don't know if you can see it's got windows here that are 20% bigger than on a normal airliner. Uh, they also don't have a blind, so the way that you black out your windows is actually controlled by these little panels here where you can dim and lighten the window thing. As you can see now outside, it's, it's full daylight outside, but here it almost looks like dusk kind of thing because now the cabin crew have dimmed the cabin for everyone just finished eating had really really good food the food was fantastic on this flight um, for a starter I had the log thin smoked salmon which was so nice so nice it came with a bread roll that had sort of three sections to it with three different toppings on it for main course I had braised Welsh leg of lamb which was delicious it came almost it looked like a joint of lamb. When you pulled it apart, it was just all shredded. All, it was so um, tender, so, so tender and so tasty. It was amazing. And then I had my usual, with the flight, I had my cheese board and my pork for a dessert, which was very nice. Apart from they need to give a few more crackers. They only gave three, they give, they're very generous with the pork and with the cheese, but then they only give you three small crackers and you would think with an airline it would be the other way around. So, yeah, BA, if you're watching, give more crackers when you do the cheese board. Yeah, I agree. The food on this fire has been so nice. I started off with the sweet potato soup. Uh, and it came with garlic and herb croutons. It had a little side salad with some feta. That was really good. The salad was really crispy, which I was really surprised at being on a plane. Uh, again, I had a bread roll and some butter as well. And in my main, I went for the roasted British chicken supreme. I might came with cold cannon mash, uh, some grilled carrots, uh, broccoli, and a brown au jus. And that was really, really nice. For plain food, I'm really, really impressed. I have to say, it's really, really great. 
Um, and then for dessert, I had an apricot souffle with custard. And I, I didn't know how that was going to come up, but it was like a proper souffle. It was really, really nice. Loved it. So that was great. I had a cup of tea. I won about my third or fourth glass of wine. I went for the Sauvignon Blanc. I had a little uh, gin zing cocktail as well when we first uh, sat down. Yeah, it's been really nice. We're about two and a half hours in, so about to do some editing now. Um, and then we'll come back to you once we've landed. So yeah, it's all good. It's all going very, very well. So we're about ten and a half hours into the flight now. We've just had our second meal. Um, we had smoked chicken salad for, for starters, which came with nice crunchy green beans, some grilled peaches. Um, they gave us lovely bread roll. This is one bread roll, but it has three different toppings on. Again, I had it for my first meal as well. Um, and then we both had chicken pie. Dan was originally going to have the prawns, but they'd run out of that because we're sat at the back of business. So. But that was all right. We had chicken pie. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it was been, nice. It's been a lot of food on this flight, though. Yeah, but it's like, you think it's almost like a whole day we've been up on the plane, isn't it? Yeah, so we're quite full up. And what do you think of the Dreamliner plane? It's okay. My only thing about it is the windows that they've locked the windows and you can't adjust adjust them but I think they've I mean over the course of the flight they've gradually got darker and darker and darker and I think they've done that to bring our body clock into night time in Rio I think that's the purpose of them but I mean it would be nice to look out the window every now and then like you can on a normal plane. So I have to say I'm not a super fan of the Dreamliner plane myself. The windows particularly, I'm not in a window seat but I still like to have to look out and see if there's any land or if there's any sea and I can't see anything at all. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, also as well my plug socket doesn't work. Uh, they did say I could move across to the empty seat across there and use the plug there but then we wouldn't have been together. It's not very sociable, is it, to go and sit over there? So um, I haven't finished my editing because uh, there's no plug sockets working. And there's no Wi-Fi on this plane either, which for such a new plane, I'm really surprised at. There's no Wi-Fi at all, even like a pay option. And I've just started watching a TV series uh, on here called Your Honor, and it's so good. I'm literally addicted to it, and I want to keep watching it. Um, so. Uh, there's about 10 episodes in the series. Uh, I'm on episode 4. So if I don't finish it today, which is... Well, 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 I can't finish it today. So I'm hoping it's going to be on the flight back so I can try and finish it on the way back because it's so addictive, yeah. Yeah, uh, nice flight. And I'm looking forward to seeing our room, the Purple Suite, at La Suite by Dustin. Okay, we have just arrived at our hotel, our first hotel in Rio de Janeiro. Um, this is La Suite by Dussel and it's a boutique hotel we both fell in love with when we saw it on the internet so we're really excited to be here. We're in the purple suite and we've been given a purple crocheted heart as the key ring which I absolutely adore. Should we go inside and have a look? Welcome to my crib. So, as I said, this is the purple suite. I'm going to give you a quick room tour, and I'm sure over the next three nights we've got staying here um, that we'll show this room a lot more because it is absolutely fabulous. So, let's have a little look around what we've got, shall we? So, as you walk in, we've got this really cute little light. Everything is painted purple, which we love. Just stop filming there for a second because Alessandro, who I don't know if he's the owner or the manager or whatever he is, but he's lovely. He just bought us some complimentary Brazilian drinks and they're really, really yummy. So, mm. we'll get back to those in a second. Let's quickly show you around. So, as you come in, we've got this lovely kind of like little bit of 
rustic artwork here, um, which is very nice. What's the Gerhardt team? Uh, we've got like a little kind of closet down here. What's in here? Oh, it's just like a little closet. It's really, really cute though. Look at the look at the feet on that. Randomly, we've got kind of a would you say that's a Japanese emperor or a Chinese emperor? Yeah, on, Chinese. On the tray. Again, really, really unique and arty. Then we've got this privacy screen here, which is Japanese. Japanese. It's got geisha on it. Um, I think it's hand painted. When you feel it, it feels like it might be hand painted, which is really, really cool. <laughs> really pretty, isn't it? Look at the detail on that. So elegant. And of course, it's purple as well, which matches the purple suite. Got little bedside tables that are mirrored. Uh, which I think are really, really cute. We have got Wi-Fi here, which is also really helpful. We've got these gorgeous, completely over-the-top chandeliers with different colour bulbs in them, uh, which I think really makes uh, adds to the effect, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah, these are really cool. Some of the bulbs have got like a little, like a little candle flick on the top as well. Completely, completely, completely over the top, but how fabulous. Totally gaudy, but it's totally, amazing. Totally so. gaudy, but it, it just works. And everywhere, I just want to everywhere in this hotel from the moment you walk in, smells amazing. I don't know if they've got oil diffusers going or it reed really diffusers, does. but it's honestly, really this, I've nice. never stayed in a place like this. Then we have a, a cute little, cute little chair here. Very Parisian. Very Parisian, very me, very geisha, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fabulous. Little no, chair in the There's a chair over there as well. Uh, and then again over here, I don't know what this is, but it's like, it's like a kind of framed. It looks like piece a kimono like type. A, it looks like a. Like a kimono type. It's yeah, how you see them in the museum. Like, like a kind of shawl or something, maybe? Yeah. It's really, really pretty. Again, the embroidery on that, the detail. You can tell that's like an original, or an original kind of piece of. What would you say it was like a like a like an original costume, isn't it? Yeah, traditional costume. Traditional something. costume, framed, beautifully framed. Uh, over here, we've got an air conditioning unit, which I think we're going to need because it's so hot here. Oh, it's just gone off as I said that. Little chair over here. Then we've got a desk. And we have a jug of water and some glasses. And then over here, we've got some more ornaments in this kind of very, again, very, very over the top for a bedroom to have this kind of shelving. It's a, kind of a concave into the wall. And then it's, it, it's just fabulous, isn't it? Very, very us. Uh, okay, let's show you the, another one here. Let's show you the bathroom. The bathroom's really cool as well. Following on with the purple theme. The bathroom theme. is just insane. Here we go. Come into the bathroom with me. <laughs> so the tiles, uh, the floor tiles and the actual vanity unit match. They are, they are all purple. So if you do not like purple, this will not be the room for you. But fortunately, we absolutely love it. So we've got two sinks here. Um, again, another completely random piece of artwork in the form of a soap dish, would you say it was? Yeah, something like that. In here, we've got cotton wool. I think it's all like, oh, yeah, cotton wool balls in that one, and cotton buds in that one. Shame we didn't need to bring those over here. Fabulous again, Japanese bars. Love that. We've got some towels up here. We've got some bath robes. Bath here. robes all important. And then shower. That's a duck. I'm a little bit too tall for this. So here we go. Here we go. It's massive. Bring the shower. We've it's a double some, shower. We've been given some little um, complimentary uh, kind of shower gel and shampoo and conditioner, which is really nice. There's a shower either end, so we can shower together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd like to see that in the vlog, wouldn't you? No. So yeah, that's really cool. So we've got the showers here. We've got a door here. I don't know where this door goes. I've not actually been in here. The balcony. Does it go? Should we have the balcony? Come along. But, I mean, I mean, you can't see much right now. Oh. 
So it's actually raining at the moment. So this is our balcony. So if you look down, you can see the infinity pool beneath us. And this is hopefully where we're going to be having our breakfast tomorrow morning, actually in the pool on a floating tray. So keep your fingers crossed for us that the weather is nice. Up there where David is showing you now is where we'll be able to see Christ the Redeemer when it's not foggy. So at the moment there's too much fog and mist and you can't see him, but he is up there and hopefully we'll be able to show you him tomorrow. So back into the bedroom. And the last thing to show you is a massive, massive closet, which is just over here. <coughs> and it's kind of a walk-in closet. The gentleman that collects us from the airport, he brought our bags up for us and put them in here for us. So our cases and bags are in here, but as you can see, uh, there's uh, not many hangers actually. But we'll walk home. I don't think we're going to Because we're not unpacking, pack. because we're going in three days time. So yeah, we're in the closet. Um, well, we're not in the closet, obviously, but we're in the closet <laughs> physically. And yeah, this is, this is our room. What do you think? Tell me in the comments down below, would you like to stay in a room like this? And that brings an end to our travel day. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on our travels with us today. It's been a very long day and it's the longest I've ever actually flown for. I've never had a flight that long before. David, you have, you've done a 14 hour flight, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, you've done uh, Dubai to New York, which was 14 hours, but this was the longest for me. It didn't actually seem like 12 hours on a plane, I have to say, um, but the flight was really great. And then when we got to Rio de Janeiro, the airport experience was really, really great. We got straight off the plane. We were one of the first people off the plane. We were the first people in the immigration hall and they literally walked straight off the counter. Uh, they checked our passports and we were straight through. There's no visa requirement for UK citizens to come to Brazil. So that was even better. So literally straight through, uh, we got through that. Our bags were coming off of the um, belt as soon as we arrived at the belt. So we just picked up our bags immediately. We walked out and then we saw our driver that we booked through our resort, um, through our hotel. Um, and he was waiting there for us. Literally led us to the car and then we drove. Um, my first impressions of Rio, well, I wouldn't want to drive here myself. It's a little bit chaotic. There appears to be just one speed which is fast. Everybody was kind of cutting everybody up. It was 9 p.m. on a Wednesday evening and the roads were ram-packed in certain places as well. Yeah, it, I just got a feeling of absolute busyness. And then we came to this hotel, La Suite by Dussel, and it's just a feeling of tranquility and calmness. It's the complete opposite to what we experienced coming from the airport to here to be in here. So really, really lovely. And I have to say, very, very tired. David looks very tired as well. So we're gonna to go to bed. Our time, it's actually now um, five past 10 Brazilian time, which is five past two UK time. So we've been up for a long time. So it is time to go to bed and get some sleep. So thank you for coming on Travel Day tomorrow. Uh, we're having a little bit of chill time, I believe by the pool. And then we're gonna hopefully, if the weather, is good enough we're doing our helicopter flight across Rio for an hour so come along and join us on that vlog next week uh, as always if you've liked this video please give us a thumbs up if you're not subscribed please get a subscribe button and hit that little bell as well so you know when our next video comes out and as always remember never grow up